Tom Brady returned home for the first time in his career, and the Patriots rebounded from Brady's first loss of the season and improved to an AFC best 8-2 and two with a 30-17 win over the 49ers. For the second time in three games, Tom Brady threw for four touchdowns without an interception. And Dominique Foxworth on NFL Nation isn't that impressed with New England, however. I think that this team is not as strong as people think they are. I think we give them a lot of credit based on their past. But uh, with Gronk, who's been in and out for injury this year, he's kind of the only game breaker they have on offense. And they don't have anybody else who really scares you. I think Bennett is somewhat scary, but he's no Gronk. And on defense, I think uh, getting rid of Jamie Collins is going to hurt them. It's, it's hurt them a little bit, but they don't have a ton of playmakers on defense. And that's kind of been their bread and butter, despite all the the accolades that we give to Tom Brady. I think consistent defensive play has been really part of the reason why they've been great for so long, and I'm not sure I see that this year. Ryan, we don't usually hear the New England Patriots and overrated in the same sentence, but do you think it's true? I mean, who's rating them? I mean, uh, what what are we saying about them? Like, what what is the overrated part? Are they an eight and two team? Yes. The are they the best team, team in the in AFC? They're they're in the conversation of the best team in the NFL. If you look at what this team was able to do without Tom Brady, the ways they found to win games without having their star quarterback, the way this offense is able to morph, plug pieces in. Deion Lewis comes off of injury. They plug him right back into the game, and he's able to make plays. Finding a running game with a Garrett Blunt, going for over 100 yards yesterday, and figuring out ways to win. It was an ugly game in the first quarter yesterday, 13-10, to 10, and clearly San Francisco is not a good football team. But after a tough loss to Seattle on Monday, going across country, finding ways to win that game, New England Patriots are a team that is in the top three of, of my picks to win the Super Bowl. I think you have the Seahawks and Dallas from the NFC, and they'll be playing the New England Patriots to see who hoists the Lombardi Trophy at the end of the season. This team is not about the pieces. It's about the sum of the parts. It's about how everybody works together. How many times have we said, oh, Tom Brady's been so good with no-name receivers, with receivers who other teams don't want? whether it's Branch or Patton, guys who have to go to other teams and never quite have the success. We've seen this team be great without having the marquee names at other positions. And I think this is just another year where they are doing that. And when it comes down to the end, we're going to be talking about the New England Patriots in late January, early February. This is a team that has every opportunity to win the Super Bowl that we thought they did before losing to Seattle two weeks ago. Are there chinks in the armor? Are they as perfect as we, as the media, was trying to make them out to be early? No, but they are still a team That's to be That's where the overrated with. thing comes in because people were asking, like in our, in our morning meetings, Sometimes we oh, are the Patriots going to run the table and every week I'm like, no, that's not we can't add because that, who thinks they're really going to run the table. So if the, if the people who thought that clearly they overrated them. But I think most so people who are looking at it more soberly realize that if the Broncos stay healthy, it's them and the Broncos. They didn't. Right. So the Patriots are clearly the class of the AFC. Now, in terms of whether they win the Super Bowl or not, or really make a push to that comes down here, I understand the point. When Brady has one elite pass catcher to throw the ball to, they are a real Super Bowl threat that season. Randy Moss, a healthy Gronk. That, and when, because the team is really about the coach. Belichick can take anything. Matt Castle win you 11 games. He could take Brady without an elite offensive uh, target and, 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 and make the playoffs, maybe win a game. But when Brady has that elite offensive target, they'll make the Super Bowl. And so what, really what it comes down to is Gronk. The idea that trading Jamie Collins hurts the defense, for people like me and people just kind of watching the team, yeah, it seemed like that at first. But when you start reading about how the coaches on the Patriots who are breaking down the film are going, no, we can do without him, I'll actually take their word for it. I don't think it's going to hurt them if they thought it was okay to get rid of him. Clearly the class of the AFC, I, don't think, I think that means they're not overrated. I think Foxworth does a good job. He deserves our respect. I respect where he's coming from. I respectfully disagree with him. Bottom line is this. If you're looking at the Patriots, you have to look at the rest of the AFC. Nobody in the AFC East fears, you know, gives me reason no. to pause. Yep. Nobody in the AFC North gives me reason to pause the way we've seen Baltimore and Pittsburgh struggle. And don't get me started with the Cincinnati Bengals. I'll get to Marvin. We're going to get there shortly. In just a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. The AFC South, please. Andrew Luck, MVP. We can stop that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have the AFC West. And, and Kansas City just lost to Tampa. 
Denver, Trevor Simeon, he's good, but let's pump the brakes on all that. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they expose themselves being vulnerable against the run defensively, as well as defending tight ends. The elite part of them is in their secondary with wideouts. Against everybody else is a different ball game. And so when we look at it from that perspective and we think about how horrific Denver, Oakland's defense could potentially be, we see the AFC for what it is. By virtue of that alone, they're not overrated. But then we go to the Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots bend a lot in terms of being 17th against the run, 15th against the pass, stuff like this. They're the number three ranked defense. They find ways to keep you out of the end zone, accumulating points. This is something they deserve to be credit for. So since we look at it from that perspective, by virtue of that, they're not overrated. And then, last but not least, if this is the team that's going to come out of the AFC, right, then we're ultimately asking ourselves one question. Do we really want to say we'd bet against New England to win one game, which is a Super Bowl, okay? Because we don't look at much of the, uh, we don't think that much about the AFC. So by virtue of that, it's not overrated. I agree. Yeah. You mentioned the AFC North. I want to get into that right now. Mm -hmm. It was a miserable day for the Bengals on many accounts. They lost to the Bills 16-12 to and dropped to 3-6-1 and on the season. In the game, since he fears they lost A.J. Green for the season with a hamstring injury, and they lost running back Giovanni Bernard for the season after tearing his ACL. Marvin Lewis is in his 14th season with the team and has yet to win a game in the playoffs. Stephen A., should the Bengals fire him right now? Yes. Um, this is not something that I've hesitated about. Other people have been reluctant to say this. I have no problem with this. I am somebody that unapologetically roots for African-American coaches because I don't see an abundance of them getting a lot of the opportunities on the collegiate level more so than the NFL level. I have been unapologetic about this, but I am also fair. And I take, I take this situation very, very seriously. There's a whole bunch of coaches on the come up. How in God's name? Could I talk about Jason Garrett years ago, not this year, of course, but Jason Garrett years ago and a plethora of other coaches, and I never point about Marvin Lewis. 14 years and you can't win a damn playoff game? Are you kidding me? 14 years? How in God's name do you still have the head coaching job? It is nice to hear that the city of Cincinnati suddenly mentioned in my name more because I've been on the bandwagon talking about how Marvin Lewis needed to be going years ago. It is an absolute disgrace that this man is the head coach in Cincinnati. I'm not saying he doesn't know football. I'm not saying he can't coach. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying your record, your record has to count for something. And for you to be a coach in your 14th year and you still don't have one playoff victory on your resume is the epitome of mediocrity. It gives, I mean, it just gives life. Who are we to talk about any coach? You tell me one coach. I check what coach in the NFL has coached for 14 years and don't have one postseason win. Who is it? I want to know. I mean, he's, and all of this stuff about diversity, he's throwing the argument right out the window, Ryan. What are we to say? What, what, as a black you know, man, what am I to say about diversity if this man could coach 14 years and still don't have a damn player? Not one. Okay, well, I can tell That's you as, as a green man or a purple man, it doesn't matter. Right. Marvin Lewis, kind of a poor man's Marty Schottenheimer. Mar Marty Schottenheimer got unlucky in the playoffs a lot of times. But the time. he did win some. Yes, he did. Marvin Lewis, I, I don't think, is Marty Schottenheimer, but there's a, there's a version of that going on here. He's a solid coach. I don't find him inspirational, but he's a solid coach who's coached up a good, solid team in recent years. But without the playoff wins, as you mentioned, last year I felt like it was a turning point. Andy Dalton started looking good, giving you evidence. Maybe he turned the corner in the playoffs. Primetime games, he was good. Fourth quarters, his production would tick up. Let's see what happens in these playoffs. Then he gets hurt. And you go, man, I feel bad for Andy Dalton and Marvin Lewis because this might have been the year they could do something. It didn't happen. Let's see what happens next year. Can they, can they push that in the right direction, get over the And they, they regressed. They They've lost gone their backward. offensive coordinator. At, right, which is a thing. But still, it, Marvin Lewis has had enough time. I do finally agree with Stephen A. Smith after this season. I would change coaches, but why do it now? Now, you see, have you have no chance. You have no chance. Like AJ Green down for the season. I'm coming Why back. No. I'm coming why back. Go ahead. Anyway. I am. I'm coming back, y'all. Go ahead. I, I, I'm go ahead. What are you mad at? No. Go ahead. I, 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 I agree coming. with you. I agree with both of you guys. He's had his time. He's done not just a good job. He's done a very good job in Cincinnati. You think of the coaches that have left: Jay Gruden, right? Mike Zimmer, 
Hugh Jackson, all of them head coaches in the league now. And you talk about Schottenheimer. He has had that unlucky streak. The year that they won the AFC North with Carson Palmer mm -hmm. in 2005, going to 2006 playoff, blows his knee out on the first mm -hmm. drive on a big pass. Mm -hmm. You know, and so he's had some situations that have kept him from having a full loaded deck going into the playoffs. That doesn't excuse him. It is time for him to go. But in the same sense, you talk about the 14 years, those 14 years allows him to finish yeah, this like, year. To fire not, him now, you gain nothing. Don't talk it. Can I come back you to this? You gain nothing from firing him. Can I answer, what him? Can him I answer yes. this? What are you mad at him about? You only fire him now if you're mad at him. I don't like ineptitude. I don't like giving a pass to somebody at the expense of so many others. I can make the legitimate argument it's his fault Hugh Jackson suffering in Cleveland. You know why? Because Hugh Jackson should have been the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals because he was the offensive coordinator. He left. Before that, Jay Gruden was the offensive coordinator. He left. Before that, Mike Zimmer was the defensive coordinator. He and left. And do you so, think those people are mad at Marvin no, Lewis? No, 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 no. Let me say this to you. I believe they're the reasons for Cincinnati's success because now that he's on his own, where are they now? This is a team that's always had the talent. The first five to six years, Marvin Lewis had a point. It was such dysfunctionality that raked through the Cincinnati Bengals franchise. Marvin Lewis built that from scratch, deserves an immense amount of credit for it. So let's give, I'll give him a five-year pass. I'll give Marvin Lewis a five-year pass. What about the last eight? I want to make this point. I want to make this point. You can't win a I want to make this point. Come on, man. If you, Come I, on now. I, we all agree it's time for him to go at the end of the now. season. Now! To fire him now, without A.J. Green, Giovanni Bernard, you're not going to win anyway, is to publicly humiliate him. I he agree. has done really? nothing. Wait a minute. Really? Marvin Lewis has done nothing to deserve the public humiliation of a midseason firing. Th 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 you know what? The sentimental. Listen. No, Mr. it's not about this. It's not, it's not about, it's Abby, not about the sentiment. It's about the fact that this man, you talked about what the Cincinnati Bengals wore before him. Right, he's made them what they were last year, what they are and, today. And he's also made them in the last with, eight with, years. With losing the people that they have lost as far as players, he's the guy to finish the season. Are my what point. do you accomplish by bringing in someone new Let me explain. Now. This is where both of y'all are wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, both of you should be ashamed of yourself. And I'm going to tell you why. What about the citizens of Cincinnati? Does anyone care? Does, am I the only one up here that cares about the American citizens? I mean, about these, no these, citizens. These, these citizens don't play these, no ball. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He ain't coaching ball. He ain't, they, they, they dysfunctional. They losing. I'm sorry. What about the city of Cincinnati? That Louisville What do you area? do by bringing listen, someone else in? They're going to start to win without season, A.J. Green? The season is a wash. Right. Excuse me. We want to make a point. That we are moving in he a different direction a as opposed to charging yeah, people to hold their money. Statement. He's saying we're the statement is we mean business. We're moving in a different direction. We're moving in a different direction. The statement is we're dysfunctional. We're getting another guy in the middle of the season. Okay. Stop it. Okay. Stop it. Unbelievable, y'all. You're not cool. Oh, so wait, you but you keep it for 14 right. years and all the stuff that you said has been going on. It's still going. So you fired him in the middle of the year. He should have been gone three years ago. You guys, we. Go ahead. We, we got to go to break, but I do want to add point of order here. You said what coach has had 14 years, no playoff wins. Jim Mora did have 15, just to make that oh, clear, and no Jim playoff Moore. wins. Just correcting the facts. Playoffs. Playoffs. More playoffs. first take after the break. Stay here.